Hello all. Um, I would like to thank you all for joining us here today. Um, my name is Raghav Garg, and I'm a freshman here at the Charter School of Wilmington. And on behalf of Help the Veterans, Project Welcome Home Troops, and Stop Soldier Suicide, I would like to welcome you all to this very special screening of the film Almost Sunrise. Um, I would like to invite Mira Garg and Mary McCann, both juniors here at the Charter School of Wilmington, to say a few words. This will be followed by the movie screening, uh, a Q&A session, and then refreshments. Thank you. Um, hi, everybody. My name is Mary McCann, and I am a junior, year, a junior here at the Charter School of Wilmington. Uh, I help Mira run Help the Veterans Club here. Uh, and I'd like to say that it is especially personal to me as my father was a Marine. <laughs> um, we are very excited about this screening of Almost Sunrise. Um, Mira started Help the Veterans, uh, the organization, when she was in eighth grade at the Independent School. Uh, it is a nonprofit with the Delaware Community Foundation. Uh, I'd like to invite her to say uh, more about the mission of Help the Veterans. Hi everyone, um, so I'm Mira, and thank you all so much for coming again. So, um, growing up, my mom, uh, who is a physician at the Wilmington VA Hospital, would always share stories with my brother and me um, about the difficult conditions that some of our veterans face, and how through it all, many still had um, a positive attitude and a desire to look for the positives in their situation. So this inspired me to start the Help the Veterans organization. And our goal is to connect the youth and our community um, with our veterans and um, give back to those who have served our country. So in the, um, during the past few years, we have established different student-run initiatives in several schools um, in different states. And we especially aim to connect our community with our veterans. So, um, I now want you to imagine a hypothetical situation. Imagine that there is a great, uh, there is a new viral strain, such as Zika, which has been affecting many um, of, of the people in the US. About 300 to 400,000 people are dying from it, and 22 people are affected, or are, are die from it every single day. This if this were true, it would be all over the social media and it would be all over the news. However, this does exist. Due to post-traumatic stress and depression, 22 veterans commit suicide every single day. And according to the National Institute of Health, over 20% of the 2 million returning veterans from Iraq and Afghanistan um, suffer from post-traumatic stress. So we hope that by showing this uh, film, Almost Sunrise, we shed some light on this imminent issue and highlight different ways in which we as a community can come together and fight for our veterans. So um, Senator Chris Coons is also here today and I would like to invite him on stage to say a few words. Thank you, Mira. Thank you, Mary. Um, thank you for what you've both done. Thank you for taking the initiative and for engaging our whole community. Um, and thank you for bringing this together this evening. Could I just ask any veterans who happen to be with us this evening to stand for one moment? And could we please applaud them and thank them for their service? Um, whether they served decades ago um, in the fields of Europe or in the campaigns in the South Pacific, whether in Korea or in Vietnam, whether in Afghanistan or Iraq, whether in dozens of other countries around the world where a current generation of veterans have taken on um, the risk and the duty and the sacrifice of serving us. Um, we as a nation today are free because of you and because of your service and because of others who are literally in harm's way right now as we speak. I was at an event earlier today and I got into a debate with somebody and they said, well, it's not like we're at war or something, <laughs> literally. I stopped and said, man, we are at war. I just joined President Trump in Dover three weeks ago as Ryan Owens' remains returned. A 
And no matter how you feel about politics or about policies, we all of us owe a debt of gratitude to those who have served and have sacrificed, whether families at home, those who've served abroad, or those who continue to serve today. So we have a compelling and powerful film to watch. Brian DeSavatino, I'd like to just thank you for a moment, you and your son Jacob, for making me aware of 22 and 22, the dramatic challenge of combating veteran suicide um, that you have drawn so much attention to, um, and for the resources um, that so many organizations, not least of which Welcome Home Veterans, make available to provide sustained and meaningful support to those who continue to live with the legacy of having served on our behalf and sacrificed here or abroad. So let's pay close attention to this film. I hope to join you at the end again and to hear what you think are suggestions for what difference we can make. Um, and thank you, I'd like to also recognize Lawrence Kirby, who is the Executive Director of the Delaware Veterans Commission. Could you just rise for a minute and raise um, your hand to the crowd, please? Give him a round of applause. Um, we have others involved in veteran service organizations and other veterans here, but I think it's important for us to realize that there are organizations already existing. There are great resources, not least of which, of course, is the VA hospital um, just down the road here in Wilmington. Uh, the CBOX, veteran service organizations, and lots of other resources. Um, I look forward to hearing from you at the end what you think are the things, the steps that we should take in response to this powerful film. Mira, thank you very much. Thank you. Um, very quickly, we would like to thank a couple of people. Uh, thank you to Mr. Brian DeSabatino from Stop Soldier Suicide and Jacob DeSabatino, who started the 22 in 22 campaign as a high school student at St. Mark's to raise awareness about soldier suicide. Uh, we would also like to thank Project Welcome Home Troops for collaborating with us and bringing this wonderful film here to you all today. Um, very quickly, we'd like to recognize Senator Coons, Senator Delicolo, um, Lawrence Kirby, and David Strawbridge for coming. Uh, thank you all for being here and enjoy the movie. Post-traumatic stress, or PTSD, was just a term for me, even an acronym. And I'm sure it was the same for many of you as well. But this film depicts what, what, our, what our veterans truly face on a daily basis. But it also shows the hope and transformation that is available for our veterans when we as communities can come together and actively engage with them to help find solutions. All of the proceeds from this screening will go to fund veteran workshop workshops for veterans offered by Project Welcome Home Troops. Um, the workshops will be free of cost and will help our local veterans and military members. Every penny that you donate will go to help our veterans. Um, we would now like to invite Ms. Leslie Moore on stage. She is the nat uh, National Director of Project Welcome Home Troops, which is a program of the International Association of Human Values, um, to speak to us today and tell us more about this program.
Thank you, Mira and Mary. I just amazing. I'm, I'm astounded by our youth today, and I really feel so ho hopeful about our future with young people like this um, devoting their time to supporting our veterans and our community. And so thank you so much for organizing this. Uh, so Project Welcome Home Troops, you got a glimpse of it on the film, and, and it's really it's a restorative practice, mind-body resilience workshop that helps veterans and their family members um, kind of what veterans say when they take the program, like, I got myself back. I feel like myself again. And that's really, you know, an amazing thing that we're able to offer to them, and that they're able to really come to on in their own manner, in their own way, to come back to themselves. So it's a, a the center of the course is the power breath meditation that you uh, saw a bit of on the film. And it's really these uh, breathing techniques that that gently begin to release stresses and traumas that the body holds. You know, the body keeps the score of everything that's happened to us from childhood until now. And so that those techniques begin to release that trauma and to help them come back to themselves. So it's really amazing. Um, a number of the veterans that you saw in the film are now have now become some of our facilitators. And they're helping, they're ultimately will become teachers of the program themselves um, because they believe in it so strongly. So. Uh, we're really excited to be bringing the workshop here to Wilmington for the first time. Um, we have some information out on the table there. It's May 11th to the 15th are the workshop dates. So I know we have some veterans and service providers and family here in the audience. So we'd really love for you to join us uh, during that program. And I think, are you dialing up? Uh, we've got some special guests coming up, but um, we'll be, I'll be interviewing uh, T Michael Collins, the director of the film, and Tom Voss will be joining us via Skype there in, I think, Los Angeles right now. Uh, so we'll be, I'll ask them some questions and get things started, and we'll have, I think, mics in the audience so people can ask questions of them if you have any questions about the program. Um, wait, are, you, are, they, are they in? Okay, good. But we teach this program, so right now we're teaching, we have a research study going on at the Palo Alto VA Hospital. It's a four-year study of this Power Breath Meditation Workshop. Uh, and the VA there is very excited kind of about the um, implications that it can be taught to a larger audience and a larger uh, groups of people rather than one-on-one -on -one therapies. And it's a nice thing when we go through the program, we're offering to veterans the ability to, we teach a home practice. So veterans are very independent, self-reliant. We give a practice that they can do on their own um, in, in the comfort of their home or out in nature like these guys did. Uh, and we are teaching on several military bases at Quantico, MacDill Air Force Base, um, in Florida and also in Texas and a number of vet centers across the country. So we're in communities around the country and we really look to bring not just the workshop, but con continued support for the veterans, building community, collaborating with Hi, local veteran service organizations. Oh, they're in a car. <laughs> hey, guys. Hey, guys. Mary, you need to dial Tom and also. Uh. Sorry, I'm stuck in traffic, so I'm just Okay. Can we start asking you questions now while we're dialing in Tom? Oh, I can see that. Michael? Yes? <laughs> are, you ready to take, are you ready to take a question? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear. Okay. Um, Hello. <laughs> There's Tom. <laughs> so welcome, gentlemen. We're happy to have you here. We have a number of um, veterans, service providers, community members, and students of the Wilmington High School here with us. Hello, everyone. Thanks for having me. Hi, everyone. So Michael, I'm going to start with you and just ask, uh, why did you make this film? Why was it important to you? Um, for me, making this film was important because um, well, I was doing some volunteer work for a vet's organization, and I got to, you know, through that experience, really understand everything I think that the veterans community, the military families were going through, and, and sort of understand how, how disconnected I was from it. Um, 
And also, that was when I got to learn about the suicide crisis. Um, I was really shocked and um, I guess a bit ashamed that we weren't talking about it. We weren't all coming together as a community to do something about it. And I just felt like I wanted my next film to be about the veteran and military family experience to give people an opportunity to, to really walk in the shoes of a veteran, you know, I guess in this film quite literally, just to, just to have that experience so it wouldn't feel so disconnected from it so that we would all then see that we're all part of the same community and that we're all in this together. Great, thank you. Tom, can you speak to your experience as uh, with moral injury and PTS and how did that manifest, how does that different for you or was it different? Um, what would you describe that as? Yeah, um, I think there's, there's a couple of differences uh, between moral injury and uh, post-traumatic stress. So I look at, personally, I looked at moral injury as more of uh, like muscle memory. So you're in these dangerous situations uh, constantly for a year, pretty much uh, straight. So your body and uh, everything kind of adapts to that. So you come back home and uh, you're put in situations that remind you of that or uh, bring, bring those memories back, you know, you have that physical reaction. So moral injury for me was, is more of a uh, more, more emotional, more deep rooted uh, in you. So uh, Anthony has a really good uh, analogy that I like to use. It's uh, post-traumatic stress is what wakes me up at night. Moral injury is what keeps me up at night. So um, they're, they're, they're very uh, kind of distinct from each other, but they go, they go together. So they're, they're almost, they're almost late. Thanks, Tom. And Michael, I know that you're really excited to have the film being shown in a high school. I know that's one place you wanted to take the film. Uh, what does that mean to you, and what are you hoping for the, the future of the film and what's going to happen with it? Um, yeah, it's very exciting. I think, you know, one of the most exciting things for me as a filmmaker is actually bringing the film out and sharing it with students uh, and high school students. Especially, you know, I think uh, it's just, you know, we're, we're at an age where we're, there's still so much to learn, you know, and um, I think I've had some of the best questions, uh, you know, because their, their perspective is still so wide and uh, most thoughtful questions actually come from a lot of high school students. So we, we have a campaign that is really about, um, you know, promoting wellness and connecting communities and I think um, you know, as you can see, this, this whole screening was organized by an eighth grader. I mean, that's just so inspiring and so incredible. That, that personally gives me so much hope <laughs> for the future that people are getting so engaged in their community at such a young age. She's grown up a little. I believe she's a junior now. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, for me, th this is just where... When I think about the future and making the world a better place and using film as a tool for that, the first place I want to bring the film is to young people. So I'm just really grateful for this and I hope that we can do this, use this model and, and do it over and over. Um, so yeah, just really grateful. Great, thanks. Tom, we've got a whole lot of um, veterans and service providers in the audience and what would you like to share from them from your perch and perspective now of being, having gone through the workshop and what benefits they might reap or if they're on a fence of like, is this for me or should I do this? What would you like to say to them? Sure. I mean, I think that the workshop for me really, um, one thing, it was completely out of my comfort zone. So I was, um, you know, not really open to that, but I got to a point of where I wanted to try anything, you know, and, and I, I really stress that don't let yourself get to that point of where you're, um, you know, in such a hole that you're like, I won't I'll try anything to to, to get out of it. So, so really be open to these kinds of experiences. So for me, uh, I went on the workshop and I, and I had never done anything like that before. But as soon as I got into it and we started doing the breath work, some light yoga, some meditation, um, I could really start, start uh, noticing anything, noticing a difference. So, so more so than when I was on medication. So for me, this was like a huge uh, step in the right direction. So. I would uh, recommend uh, everyone of the veterans and, and the care providers in the audience really, really looking into the workshop. Uh, it's free uh, for veterans and their families. So that's really important too, that we're really bringing the families in to heal along with the veterans because they're going uh, through the, the same things uh, with the veteran. 
Great, thanks, Tom. I'd like to, I know there's questions out there in the audience, so I'd love to open it up. I think there's some mics uh, floating around out there. So raise your hand if you have a question for Michael or Tom or anyone else here up on the panel. Hi, thank you so much for bringing this film. It was beautiful and um, a tearjerker a little bit. Um, I wanted to ask if it would have been helpful for you to have these type of breathing techniques in your combat situation, meaning while you were there, I'm sure you were struggling on a daily basis with this. Would that have been helpful for you and is that something that would be beneficial to be incorporated into the program. Tom, could you hear the question? Mm -mm. So the question is, would these techniques that you learned after um, your separation from the military, would they have been useful to you during your deployment? And if so, like, how would that help? How would have you, is that the question? So you want to see if you, had these, if you had these tools with you while you were deployed, would that have been helpful sure. to you? Yeah, I mean, I think it really would have been helpful. Um, a lot of a lot of people uh, think that you know yoga and meditation, you know, it's um, you know kind of like that, you know hippie, you know all this kind of stuff. But really, for me, it's a it's a performance thing. So right, if you can manage your own stress and you're in, your, in a combat zone, um, you're going to deal with the day to day situations a lot better than if you can't. So for me, this is uh, a way to manage my own stress. And uh, from there, you have clear thinking, clear uh, decision-making skills. All those things come with it. So I think it'd be very beneficial, or would have been very beneficial for me, as a 20-year-old in a combat zone, to be able to have these to come back after a mission, decompress myself, and uh, get ready for the next mission. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Yes. All right, is this on? It is. You got me, leave me Charlie up there? <laughs> Tom, can you hear me? I'm not sure. I, I can hear uh, words, kind of, yeah. Words, <laughs> kind of. Uh, I, the first is a comment to Michael. I got to see um, uh, the preview at the Student Veterans of America conference in uh, Anaheim in January. and. Uh, you had a huge impact on student veterans out there, and so thank you. And, and it was that impact was the reason that uh, I'll be bringing uh, your film to Delaware Tech Community College in Delaware uh, during Suicide Awareness Month uh, in September. So, so thank you for making that, this film. Um, Tom, one of the things that we've discussed a few times, especially with uh, a few members in the audience, is we spend a lot of money and time in training our soldiers, Marines, Airmen, Coasties, you name it. And I'm an Air Force guy, so don't hold that against me. <laughs> but we spend a lot of time uh, and money training them to make them uh, what they are, to, to, be, to be effective, to be in the fight, to do whatever their job is in the military. But when it's time to get out, we spend a week, uh, a transition assistance program, we don't give them any time or money or training to make them a civilian. So uh, one, I wanted to have a comment, uh, if you could give me a comment on that. And two, did you run into any college students during your trek? Thank you for your time. <laughs> Tom, I'm not sure how much you caught of that. Uh, uh, a little bit, if you could repeat the, the questions. Um. <laughs> Hoping I can remember the questions. So, so he was. Uh, what he, the question was, or it was a comment initially saying uh, that a lot of money is spent preparing soldiers for deployment, right. and when they come home, there's just a one-week transition period of training and very little money and resources invested in that. So he wanted you to comment on that. And the part two of the question was, did you meet? Um, this gentleman works with student veterans and wants to bring the film to his campus. And he's like, did you meet um, student veterans on your trek across the country? Sure. Uh, the first part, as far as the training goes, I mean, I think that, at least in my opinion, the military really focuses on, on the, uh, the physical training, right? So uh, I, I think that these, these other tools that, that, are, that you guys got to see in the film can be very complementary to the training that the military already goes through. 
And I don't, I don't hold anything against you for being in the Air Force. You guys have great uh, chow halls and you have like, uh, get to live in an apartment, so it's pretty cool. Um, and the, the second part is uh, um, we ran into many veterans uh, on, on our trip. The, um, the most, uh, really we ran into a lot of Vietnam era, era veterans, not too many uh, college age. We ran, I ran into a few veterans that I actually ended up deploying with along, along the way. So uh, we got a lot of insight from the Vietnam era, era veterans and uh, I have a lot of respect and I'm very thankful for the Vietnam era veterans because they've really taken our generation under their under their wings and really said that this is not going to happen to another generation what happened to us. So, so uh, if it wasn't for Vietnam veterans, we really uh, wouldn't have gone, Anthony and I really wouldn't have gone on this track because they, they really supported us doing it. Yes, this question back here. Yes, hi. Ooh. <laughs> um, so one of the dynamics that we hear about in returning service personnel is the extent of military sexual trauma. And um, you know, I, I, I assume it has some unique dynamics in terms of the kind of group support that one might get from fellow um, service personnel. And I wonder what you've seen um, in the groups that you've or heard from uh, people who have returned um, who feel that you know, they didn't even have the comfort or the safety in their sort of fellow soldiers and uh, how that plays out in the um, intervention that you're, you're applying here. Yeah, D Tom, the questions on military sexual trauma, I can take that if you'd like. Or sure. <laughs> He's like, yes, please. Um, yeah, so we actually have a number of um, both men and women on our workshops who are survivors of, of military sexual trauma. We do offer separate programs for women alone as they're requested, so we're, we're always happy to do that. But we also have, uh, you know, men and women in the workshops who sometimes disclose, sometimes don't, but... Um, in the end, trauma is trauma to a certain extent, and there's always that camaraderie and support. And I've, I've seen amazing um, things unfold on courses. I had a woman veteran once who, uh, who you know, survivor of trauma, sexual trauma, and there was a, a gentleman on the course who reminded her very much of her perpetrator. And in the end, he was the one who helped her heal the most because he came and apologized for everything, even though he wasn't the guilty party, but it was just, there was, a, there was a healing that was happening on the course. There's so much kind of love and camaraderie that develops on the course and such support among the participants that they, people go a long way um, through it. And, and I have another woman um, who's in my hometown, I'm from Boise, Idaho, and she uh, went through the program and had some, she couldn't sleep, you know, she couldn't go to bed till three or four in the morning, had so many things coming up. And now she's this champion and she's like ready to go on, you know, on the national news and talk about her experience because such healing happens and such progress happens for them emotionally, mentally. Uh, it's, it's quite. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. Yes. There's a gentleman right here. Oh, we've got a couple. There's one up here up front. Too. Oh, there's multiple. Yay. So uh, first I just have to, and I don't, I don't know to the extent to which you guys can hear me, but very impressive, extremely moving display, uh, tremendous uh, courage from you, Tom, and your friend, Anthony, and just, Michael, hats off to you for what you've done. I'm really glad that I had the opportunity to come by. I really am. And so this is a question I'm throwing out there generally. If you have the information, let me know. But I have a new role in local government, and one of the things that is really disturbing to me is the fact that the treatment that's offered initially is uh, not adequate. And it's clear that moving and including meditation as part of something the VA offers is, was needed and is very useful. My question is, is there a role for local government to play in facilitating this, whether it's through how we approach insurance coverage for these services or in other matters in which we can regulate and provide the appropriate support. Uh, I am new to the job and I'd just like to know from your perspective, 
what that role might be. Sure. Tom, could you hear that question? Yeah, got it. Uh, as far as local government goes, I mean, I think it, it's a, it's a, it needs a collaboration from all sides. So, you know, you see veterans are helping veterans, but we need uh, folks like you and local government to actually speak on our behalf, too. Um, so that could range from you getting in contact with the local veterans and really connecting with them to see what their needs are. If it comes to getting alternative treatments in the VA, uh, that, that's great. I mean, we need as much support as we can get in that area. Um, not everything works for everybody. So for me, it was a combination of a lot of different things. The meditation and the breathing techniques really helped me in the end. But you look at the, the, the film itself, it was peer support, it was uh, nature-based therapy, it was uh, an ending with, with Project Welcome Home Troops Power Breath Meditation Workshop. So all those things combined really, really, really helped me. And um, whatever, whatever you can do, whatever uh, progress you can make when it comes to uh, helping veterans and, and the issues that they're facing, I mean, we welcome it with open arms. Thank you. And I just wanted to add to that um, that one of the um, one of the pillars of our impact campaign is really to help change legislation. And I think uh, you know part of that is really if the, if the government is a reflection of the people, you know, is really spreading this community awareness, making everyone making it a top priority for people to improve this care for veterans and their families. And um, there are different bills that have come up at different times um, in Congress to to try to get some of this stuff changed on a federal level and I think you know locally if, if we can get people together and have signature campaigns and you know have events like this where it, it becomes a more of a priority that um, we'd love to be a part of that so I mean I, I just invite everyone to come and to, to take a look we have on our website um, all the different aspects of this this campaign and uh, we'll always have the, any initiative that comes up that's going to help to push meditation through into the VA we're going to try to be a part of. I think we have uh, one more question. There's a gentleman up front here in the yellow. I'll bow to Senator. And Senator, yeah, he's bowing down to the Senator, Senator Coons. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, Tom and Michael, I just wanted to thank you for a, a powerful film and for your initiative. Um, I'm a U.S. Senator from Delaware. You can't see me, but I can see you. Um, and so I just wanted to share with you that I'm going to take the information I've gotten this evening back. Um, I have a veterans advocate here in Delaware and one um, who's a leader on my staff in Washington. Uh, both of them are two tour veterans of Iraq and uh, bring a lot of their experience and insight and wisdom to my work. And I will look hard for partners uh, in the other party as well and see if there is more I can do to contribute to bringing um, um, meditation and alternative therapies to uh, VA care for our returning veterans. Thank you for your message tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I had one more um, comment. Um, so I wanted to thank you, Michael and Tom, for making this available for us. Um, I know that the need for people to really understand what you've gone through, which no one who's actually seen that, and, and thank you for the footage, can actually have any idea of what you've gone through in that situation and what it's like to come home. Um, I had a very dear friend of mine who became an alcoholic and uh, he and my brother recovered together. Um, he, uh, in the end, he, you know, he told me once he couldn't forgive himself for the things that had happened and two years later he was done. He, he just he just dragged himself to death. Um, I guess one question for Michael is, uh, you mentioned that you were happy that this movie, you were um, wanting this to be presented to high school students. Um, and as a high school teacher, I can tell you that I have some issues with, um, the military coming in and recruiting in high school um, young students who really don't have any idea of any of this. For them to actually see this and have some kind of idea of what's happening, be, 
before they jump into a situation like that? Yeah, well, thank, th thank you for sharing that. Um, and that was a, th that is also a big part of why I am looking forward to sharing this with younger people is because I feel like, you know, some, one comment that I've gotten from a lot of veterans is that they're very grateful that we're not portraying them in sort of that Hollywood fashion of either this homecoming hero or the other extreme of the stereotype as just a broken soldier, that we're, we're really, we're not exploiting the situation, we're not, we're not showing it, um, not diving into it too deeply, but we are showing the realities of war, the horrors of it, you know? And um, I think it's much different than the commercials that you see on television and whatever message you might be getting from a recruiter. Um, so, you know, that, that's something that we're very proud of is being able to share something that we feel like shows the complexities of this experience and something that young people can, can also think about, you know, when they're making that decision as to whether or not they should, uh, they, they want to serve their country. Thank you for that. Hi, Michael and uh, Tom. I have a uh, one question for Michael, and then I'll follow up with one for Tom. Michael, as a filmmaker, it must be incredible to come across something in your line of work that could mean so much to so many people. And having gone through this experience, and um, do you have plans on additional projects related to uh, what you've uh, what we've seen tonight? Sure. Well, I'll, I'll tell you that that's my approach to filmmaking, really, is, um, is wanting to use it as a tool to make change in the world. So the moment that we started conceiving of this film and making it, it was because we wanted there to be a campaign. We wanted it to be used to partner with amazing organizations like, you know, Help the Veterans and Stop Soldier Suicide and Project Welcome Home Troops and, and have it be a tool to bring people together to, to really amplify the message of people who are already doing amazing work. Uh, so I'm gonna to continue to stay with this film and this campaign for as long as I can, as long as I feel like it's doing good service in the world. Um, and that's sort of the phase that I'm in right now. Um, for the next films, the next projects, it'll always come from that same place. That's sort of just how I operate, you know, that when I make films, I want them to be a tool. You know, I, I also want them to be something that's entertaining, something of art that can stand alone, that will get on television, you know, so that a lot of people will see it, but it always comes from that space of wanting to create change. And uh, yeah, we're, we're in the middle of this campaign. The film is gonna be on PBS around um, Veterans Day, but we wanna do as many physical screenings as possible because we see the value of getting people together to have these conversations. So I invite everyone to come to the website. There's a host a screening button there if anyone's involved with any groups in their community or know of anyone who might benefit from uh, sharing this film. We, We'd love to help facilitate that. So, and to Tom, this, is, this whole Skype thing is really cool. Could you imagine watching a movie and then being able to Skype with your favorite actor right after the movie? It's pretty cool. You get to ask wow. questions. Yeah. Pretty cool. But Tom, I want to just ask you, I have like 25,000 questions that I want to ask you because I did yoga as well and yoga breathing and trauma-infused uh, yoga. But I really want to... Tell me what your typical day is like for you today, what you do throughout the week, and um, uh, I'm just really interested in, in what your life is like on a daily basis now. Yeah, sure. Um, so the first thing I do in the morning is get up and I, and I do these breathing exercises I learned uh, at, the, at, at this workshop, and uh, the Power Breath Meditation Workshop, the whole thing is designed to um, train you in these techniques so you have a home practice that you can take home with you. So I like to say some people like to wake up and have a cup of coffee in the morning. I wake up, uh, do a little bit of yoga, and do these breathing exercises to start my day off. So I'm uh, still very involved in uh, the veteran community, so I do a lot of uh, work, volunteer work, and um, really looking forward to continue to do that. So that's kind of like my main focus right now is uh, still reaching out, and same with Anthony, you know, still, still trying to be of service to the veteran community, still trying to be of service to uh, my own community, and I think that's really important um, today. We have one more question from Brian DeSabatino of Stop Soldier Suicide. 
Great, thank, thank you. you. Uh, Michael and Tom, uh, you can't see us, but we can see you. And uh, if you could look down uh, on us, I can, I can promise you that you had a very, very warm reception here. Um, Michael, you and yeah. I have had the great fortune to correspond with each other, and on behalf of the Stop Soldier Suicide Organization, I want to thank you for allowing us to tell our story. But as you, if you could look down on us, you could see that uh, you're in very good company. Delaware is a very, very special place. We're a very small village compared to the places that uh, you're screening this. Uh, but I can tell you, because of the people in this room, we have had a sustained conversation about military-related suicide for about the last two years. And I can tell you from the very top of the state to the bottom of the state, this community has participated in this conversation. And so I, 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 I want to thank Mira and her family for making it available here uh, at Cab Calloway and, uh, and Charter. Um, I want to thank this community for continuing this conversation. And frankly, Michael and Tom, I, I'd like to invite you to Delaware at some point, maybe when we screen this at Delaware Technical and Community College uh, once again, uh, right after Veterans Day, we'd love to have you back. Yeah, that sounds great. I'd love to come. Thank you. I think we have one Absolutely. very last question. Yes. Hi. Um, I grew up in a military family, and I have experienced things through family members and was stationed over in Japan during the Vietnam War. So I would feel uncomfortable coming into a veterans meditation thing, but you offered something for families. Uh, is that separate from your, they're in, combined together? Uh, yeah, we actually combine them together and we find it's a very um, interesting, uh, the dynamics of the course is when we, we have smaller group breakouts and we'll put veterans with veterans and family with family, but the larger group dynamic, it's really healing to everyone to kind of see both sides of the coin, what the veteran went through, because so often veterans aren't fully sharing with families. And so I've seen a lot of healing in marriages and different things evolving, and also when families there, then they can support their loved ones um, you know, in their healing process. They, they learn the techniques, they can support each other in practicing those. So we actually find it very beneficial um, oftentimes to have family, you know, family in the courses, and almost every course we have family members there. It's never been an attraction for us, yeah. Good, so I'd love to invite up Jacob DeSabotino. He is the founder of 22 and 22, and I think he just came here from the Citadel. <laughs> Come on up. Hey, Jacob, if you would say a word about your work and what you're doing. Uh, I just want to say real quick, just thank you all so much for coming out. It was about two years ago that I started the 22 and 22 program, and really we thought it was going to be myself and five football players running around a track hoping to raise a little bit of awareness, but it's exploded into this huge event where wonderful people like you have been able to come out and start a conversation about something a lot of people have not wanted to talk about or have refused to talk about. And because of that, we've been able to reach out and even save lives. And that's something that truly just blows my mind and something you should all really think about because you're really taking the first steps to changing people's lives. So thank you very much for coming out tonight. I really appreciate it. Um. So I'd like to conclude our screening today. So John F. Pre President John F. Kennedy once said, as we express our gratitude to our veterans, we must never forget that the highest appreciation is not to utter words, but to live by them. I would like to thank you all so, so much for coming today um, and for being a part of this event. Your generous donations um, will truly go a long way in, in helping our veterans here in Delaware. Um, I would also like to thank our congressmen and state representatives, as well as our veterans in the audience for coming today um, and also being a part of this wonderful event. And thank you, Michael and Tom, for joining us. Yes. Yeah, no problem. Thank you, and thank you, Mira, for putting this all together. Thanks, Mira. <laughs> I'm just really, really appreciate it. 
Just really quick, we'd also like to thank uh, the Charter School of Wilmington and Cab Calloway for letting us do this. Uh, Mr. Brian DeSabatino from Stop Soldier Suicide, Jacob DeSabatino, Film, Sp Film Sprout, Project Welcome Home Troops, Delaware Community Foundation, and our corporate sponsors for making this possible. Um, and thank you all for coming. <laughs> Yeah, so thank you guys so much for coming, and um, there are some refreshments outside as well. <laughs> thank you.